Hi, I'm Melvin Way, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my channel and put this video on a playlist. If not, uh, check out my playlist that has all of the episodes that will go into this in the future, as well as all the playlists from my other plant growing series. This was a user request uh, that I do a growing series on avocado. This is a Mexican avocado. I washed it first, and then I peeled off the sticker cut into it with a metal knife that's pretty sharp it's a steak knife and it has those uh, succulent you know fatty slices of fruit flesh inside and they're just yellow and green it tasted really good I fried all the slices with an egg this is not something I eat uh, very often if I eat Mexican food outside for example um, you know I might get a slice of avocado in some of my things but other than that it's more of a condiment for chips or something so you can see the seed up close it already has cracks in it I've damaged it you know when I was doing the slicing and if you look here the insides that are still attached to the fruit flesh are a very dark red which is different than the appearance of what I just washed I'm gonna put it in a glass of distilled water and add some hydrogen peroxide love adding hydrogen peroxide to everything because it it's interesting to look at it fizzes it's harmless it generates uh, water and molecular oxygen which is often good for a developing seed because you know at that point they don't use any carbon dioxide they're not photosynthesizing so they only need oxygen to breathe the roots for now I'm just doing this to sterilize the seed and bear in mind that I've already washed it beforehand with a soapy sponge to get off all the fat since it's covered by fat I'm pouring out most of this hydrogen peroxide you don't have to be too precise about your measurements you know there are no hard and fast rules you don't have to do like a one percent or a three percent or whatever you know something around a one percent solution would be fine you don't want to waste um, too much hydrogen peroxide either and then I would pour that out into a bunch of paper towels. In this case, paper towels were still dry in some parts, which means I didn't leave enough in. I should have just poured the whole cup under the paper towels. And the purpose of soaking the paper towels in hydrogen peroxide is to prevent rot. Otherwise, I don't know if you have experience, but basically everything will just mold over if you don't do this. I think that's a common pitfall people have with this so-called um, wet paper bag. Well, not wet wet paper towel is more like it you know they'll put it in a plastic bag seal it up and then everything just rots away and dies so it's day 11 and I'm gonna open this up have a look oh there's still some sun out it's after work so nothing is moldy that's very good news the appearance pretty much looks the same it does look like there's a crack on the other side although I'm not sure if that was there beforehand and we'll just do some watering with a squirt bottle I have full of 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. Since it's not wet enough in there, it's day 14. I'm still looking at that crack. It's getting bigger. You know, I think we're going places. Um, hopefully I have the polarity right. So I have the pole that was meant to be the top, you know, facing... Uh, up and a root will come out of this crack at the bottom. I think that's right because usually in all these plant germination series uh, a root system comes out first and due to gravitropism it goes downwards. So it's, if it's cracking at the bottom half then I think I'm off to a good start. So it's finally day 21. It's been three weeks. I'm really impatient to see what's going on inside. You know, these paper towels look surprisingly clean for something that's been sitting on a TV set-top box, which is uh, roughly 30 to 36 Celsius, depending on the weather. And it's been really hot. You know, it's 100% humidity in there, but we do have a root. And let's get a closer look. So that looks really fresh for something that's been sitting in a hot 100% container pressing against wet paper towels for three weeks. So you do have two spots, blotches that kind of look like blood, but 
I'm sure that's just a discoloration um, due to some of that uh, seed coat on the outside, if you can call it that. It sort of looks like a upside down candlestick at this point of some kind. You know, and there's this huge crack that began at the bottom and it's gone all the way to the North Pole or the Top Pole if you want to call it that. The root itself looks healthy enough. It does have some brown spots. I'm not sure if that's mold or whatnot, but I don't see any fruiting bodies. So all that hydrogen peroxide squirting in incubation pretty much did the trick. This is a very interesting seed germination compared to everything I've seen before. It's just you have this huge woody globe that just cracks. But it's not hard like wood. It's very prone to damage as the knife cut showed in the very beginning. And the textures are very interesting to look at in full sun. So with that said, I have this pot of dirt that's been sitting here. It's a bottom watering pot that kind of flares out from the top, Misco brand. I'm going to plant my avocado seed in there. Avocado seed belongs to a fruit that's a fleshy fruit, the fattiest fruit in the world, I think. And this is just potting mix that's been sterilized before by baking in the oven at, say, 350 or 400 Fahrenheit. Um, definitely well over 100 Celsius. I think that's like 170 something Celsius. But anyway, there's a little bit of diatomaceous earth and sand in there, which I use to defeat fungus gnats. I'm going to move this seed up a little bit because it's too deep now. I want to be able to see a faster sprouting event. So I'm going to put it right in the middle. It's going to have this whole pot to itself. I just had this intuition that an avocado seed would be very easy to grow once germinated and that the germination itself wouldn't actually be too difficult. I had no idea it would take so long but you know here we are it's been 20 something days and you know when you water soil that's really dry it just starts shifting around like a bunch of chocolate cocoa powder or something like that you know when you have these milk powders chocolate powders uh, everything just shifts around and acts really really hydrophobic granted I'm comparing protein to dirt and wood chips but it takes a few hours for this really dry potting mix to start to absorb water especially all the wood chips in there but once they do it's really really hygroscopic you know holds on to water really well while providing aeration so there's air space in there which is important but you don't want things to be too spacey or have wood chunks too big so I throw those out so that's my watering can fits slightly under a liter maybe 900 ml if full and I'm doing another pail so that's about 1.8 liters going in there for a pot that probably has a diameter of let's see uh, I think it's 35 centimeters 13.7 inches so anyway, it's a decent sized pot. It's not huge, but it's not so small that my plants will have this problem like they did last year with the Loquat series where everything just, you know, clogs up all the soil mass immediately and then has no room to grow. So the water is dripping through. It's a bottom watering pot. This water will get absorbed back into the potting mix when it becomes more receptive. All the surfaces to the particles have been wetted and then I'll add more water as time goes on so before we skip to the next few days let's just take a look at this paper towel mass inside some of that stuff is just discoloration you know rub off from the seed coat I don't really see any evidence of mold or at least evidence of mold that's doing well so it's day 23 two days later fast forwarding it's just a lot of watering with a squirt bottle that contains 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. We're in the May gray phase in coastal Southern California where it's just cloudy all the time. Day 27, finally I got some sun, no more watering. In day 43, check out my new setup. I got this unfinished um, wood console table, or um, it's just sort of a long table that's thin. Very nice. Uh, getting it unfinished was cheaper. It was like $85 off Amazon. But 
to get to the point there's a uh, finally a sprout there and you can kind of see like it's coming out of split earth but that's actually the flesh of the avocado seed all the reserves and you can see a white fuzziness at the tip I'm just gonna go ahead and bet that those are you know a waxy hairs provided by the plant itself to avoid damage to the shoot apical meristem when this red tusk is bursting out of the soil because it's thick it's got a lot of mass and it's coming out pretty quickly uh, in nature probably against rocks and stuff or coarse particles like here so I'm just gonna squirt on some hydrogen peroxide on the off chance that it is mold instead of hairs that are to protect it and as you can see relative to the particles like that little chunk of a branch in the upper left you know this thing is tiny at this stage so that's basically it um, avocado was quite easy to germinate I'm shocked that it took 45 days to get to this point it looks beautiful it looks like a red furry tusk I'm convinced that that's not mold and it looks like there's a earthquake fault in there so I don't think that storage of uh, nutrients is going to go away anytime soon. It probably won't rot either, based on what I saw in my low quad series. I'm squirting hydrogen peroxide directly into the crack so it can just trickle down and feed the tap root. I expect this to grow very fast based on the side of the seed and the huge amount of nutrient reserves in the seed flesh. So stay tuned to my channel and wait for episode 2. If you're watching this late, it'll already be out on a playlist. Thanks for watching. Hi, it's Melvin again. Welcome back. It's day 50. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and bookmark this playlist and help me out by adding it to your own playlist if you're not a content creator or if you are, even better. So there's been a bit of growth. Um, this thing is longer. It's less of a pink more of a solid red at the top there's more defined structure the base is more yellow it's very interesting how it just comes out of a perfectly cracked in half seed like that it's almost like an earthquake fault and the seed coat itself has turned very brittle thin black and white I think it's meant to decompose like that so this is a perfect angle at which it looks straight but actually this shoot is bent towards the sun. It's showing phototropism. So I think I'll spin the pot around. I'm not sure if I was already doing that at this point for uh, you know a few days, maybe two or three times. You know, every two or three days I would spin around the pot and then it would bend the other way. And then spin the pot and it would bend the other way again. So it's not really got a propensity to grow straight like you would want it to. The little fuzzy white hairs are not uh, as big relative to you know the pink tusk at the end of the first episode so it doesn't have that appearance of you know whether this is mold or not or it's clear that there are protective hairs and there's nothing wrong with this shoot it's very healthy so I'm just squirting it with a squirt bottle some 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide to keep everything sterile there's basically a fault line in there where the seed cracked in half and there's a hole there I didn't fill it up um, actually these potting mix particles are very large compared to conventional dirt well, I wouldn't say conventional it's just anything you would find outside in most environments except for maybe a peat bog so I'm just squirting water directly in there there's no point in extensive watering on the surface because that's not where the roots are um, from what we saw in the first episode it's basically a tap root going in so I just want to directly access that and soak the soil going vertically down I assume it's gone much longer and there's probably some horizontal expansion of the roots but not so much at this point point. and this thing doesn't really have foliage so it doesn't require a lot of water so I'm just gonna spend a lot of time squirting uh, this 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide and distilled water in there so the problem with using a squirt bottle is the flow is so restricted that you're squeezing there for several minutes like I am doing now and hardly any water comes out. The positive is that it's so gentle that none of the 
potting mix particles, large particles start floating around and shifting wildly, which I always think is bad for root system and the structure in general of a nascent developing plant. Right now I'm using the watering can. It's not too bad if there's only a little bit of water, but if it's really full, you know, watch out, things are just gonna shift all over the place. So this is some low dose chewable aspirin, 81 milligrams, one fourth of your typical aspirin tablet or pill. So this is dissolvable, since it says chewable in water, I'm gonna put it in this watering pail, which is a perfect recipe because normally people say, if you're using aspirin for plants, it breaks down into salicylic acid, a plant metabolite hormone from the willow tree in its bark. So yeah, normally the internet recipe says one gallon of water, which is almost equivalent to four liters of water. And this watering can can hold almost a liter. You know, so if I take something that's one fourth of the quantity and mix it in, that's a, a perfect concentration. So the whole point of this is people say um, using aspirin and dissolving in water and applying it to plants can help. So I'm mixing it with a metal chopstick. I'm personally not an aspirin guy. I'm an ibuprofen guy. You know, Advil, that works a lot better for me. And aspirin can have some side effects. You know, it can thin the blood, which can help. And it can also hurt if you get into a violent event where you're bleeding. In plants, this activates systemic acquired resistance. Normally, when a plant comes under attack in one area from pathogens or bugs, you know, it activates through hormone signaling some kind of resistance measures that spread throughout the plant. So this can be acquired actually directly by applying it to the leaves, but also if you water, it'll get soaked up into the roots and get concentrated there. And this is a naturally occurring hormone in plants. I would actually recommend pre-crushing those uh, chewable tablets. I mean, there was still a lot of little powderous pink chunks swirling around in there. So it's dusk. Uh, this camera is kind of autofocus happy. But anyway, I'm watering with that aspirin water crushed in a squirt bottle. And I hope this really helps out the plant. It's supposed to help with germination, uh, prevent root rot, prevent diseases. So it's day 59. It's time for some fertilizer. So the reason I'm enacting these two measures, even though you may think the avocado plant was growing just fine, the seedling, it's because this really helped out with my two succulents, the Joshua tree and the century plant. Well, the Joshua tree remains to be seen. I mean, it's growing at a glacial pace. But anyway, in chemical form, in pure chemical form, um, you know, all these compounds appear a crystal in blue. It's not something you would probably want to eat directly, but you know, dissolved into the soil. These are the pure chemical forms in usable form of all the nutrients the plant needs. So that's what this looks like right now. You know, on day 59, it's uh, been nine days since I sprayed the aspirin water. I don't know if that's made a difference, but these leaves are basically yellow which would normally be a very bad sign for a plant, but considering everything started out pink and red, you know, it's a natural progression as the pigments kick in. And I expect everything to turn a lush green eventually after maybe another week or two. So you can see all the fuzziness. Uh, the leaves are very veiny, very vascular looking. And there are small offshoots coming off uh, predetermined nodes. So, I have no idea why it develops like this, but it just does. Like, just everything just happens at once. It's not like a bean sprout where cotyledons just suddenly come out. And it's a few centimeters tall. So, I only got it this straight by spinning around the pot. And hopefully, the fertilizer will kick in and really help out the plant. Um, all these soils that I'm using in these pots have been pre sterilized. So, I'm wondering if because there are no natural microbes, you know, bacteria and fungi in there and archaea, etc. to help me break down these chunks of wood which essentially form potting mix. Are the plants undernourished and I think for my succulents the case was yes. 
So I'm being very proactive with my aspirin application, which will absorb into the leaves and stem and all parts of the plant, basically, because this water is saturated with it. Fertilizer should provide the nitrogen the plant needs to grow, along with the other basic compounds. I'll think about how to better fertilize and provide nourishment for the plant when it gets bigger. For now, it has the seed to nourish it. It's day 61. The leaves are turning green, at least two or three of them here and the rest are big and yellow. So the stem looks stiffer, hardier. Uh, there's still red leaf primordia at the nodes. I bet this would activate if an animal were to graze and bite off the leaves at the top or if I pruned. So it's looking more woody, which is what you'd expect for a tree. Although I've seen some people saplings look very flimsy and they just grow vertically. Uh, maybe those are not properly nourished and aren't exposed to the same conditions such as wind that they are in the wild thus they have weaker stems I don't know but you can see these yellow leaves are very vascular and veiny looking getting back to the aspirin it's had a limited but very successful trial in my opinion on my succulents it prevented root rot and made them start growing again or maybe it just could be because I watered a lot more during that time that the plants recovered, they were underwatered, as hard as that is to believe for succulents. But in the past, when I overwatered, I would just get root rot, and I lost three out of four Joshua tree seedlings. So the leaves are developing really well here, and I hope the fertilizer will kick in. You know, all these pre sterilized soils might be deficient in natural microbial activity that might help break down the wood chips and all the other components such as peat moss in there. Thus far I have very little to complain about. This has been a textbook opening for this plant. Everything's developing beautifully and very quickly, as quickly as it can go according to what I've heard and read. So it looks like we'll have several big green beautiful leaves soon and hopefully I won't need to keep spinning this pot around to have it reorient and stay straight in the sun. Thanks for watching my second episode. Stay tuned for a third, or if you're watching this well after the fact, just check into my YouTube channel and look at my playlist to see every single episode. Hey, welcome back. It's Melvin. It's day 63. I'm doing a fast recap of the aspirin watering that I started in the days prior. Crush a low dose aspirin chewable tablet with pliers. Increase the surface area for dissolving it faster. Dissolve one low dose pill and one liter of water, or you could do the traditional American dosage of a full dose, 325 milligrams in one gallon of water. So it's said to do many things uh, boost plant health, immunity, faster germination. If you spray it on the foliage, you know, maybe 1.6% or whatever can absorb into there depending on how concentrated you have it and that can also supposedly prevent insect damage so I don't know how true any of this stuff is but I've been trying it on my plants and it's a good idea suggested to me by one of my viewers I hope it pans out and I'm not going to immediately fertilize because I want the plants to be nursed back to health those that were struggling such as my Joshua tree seedling and my century plant seedling so as you can see, the foliage is a yellow green. There's a leaf that's greener and rounder. It's, well, it's more oval. I don't know, you know, what constitutes a cotyledon. That may be the closest thing I'll ever see on this plant to one. Uh, in some plants, you don't even ever see the cotyledons. You know, so is this a monocot or what? Um, I can look that up later. So for now, I'm just doing the aspirin watering. I'm not going to get every single thing and the leaves are waxy so to be honest I don't know how much aspirin will actually get on there and absorb so that little white critter is perhaps a fungus gnat and one that's newly molted that probably came out of the soil I've always had some fungus gnats and now that I've been watering more they've been coming out more or it could be a white fly you know it does look a little different or maybe it's an albino fungus gnat, who knows. So it was on there too. I think it's a fungus gnat. You know, sometimes they get in the house and they're annoying. But 
as long as you kind of tap the screen door when you open your sliding door, well in my case for the balcony, then they'll go away and if they're not in great numbers then they won't really be a bother. I mean they're pretty easy to slap and kill if they get inside and buzz around the bathroom mirror at night. So the foliage looks very healthy and that's my favorite leaf although for whatever reason I don't think it's going to get much bigger than that and it's got water on it. It's very aesthetic. The stem is you know a yellow. It has sort of a woody appearance and it has a woody feel and twang to it and you see all these red leaf primordia that are probably not going to activate unless something chews off the top leaves which won't happen here unless I do some pruning. In most cases I think pruning isn't necessary unless something grows very tall, thin, and spindly. You see that in some people's fruit uh, seedlings or saplings. And I think that could just be due to poor nutrition. And, you know, I have this theory that maybe just growing things indoors and supporting them with sticks. In the absence of any wind to bend the stem naturally all the time, maybe the stem just doesn't get any stronger. But I think it's mostly due to poor nutrition. So I'm getting several angles here with some great macro footage. You can see all the hairs. They're not as prominent, not as big in proportion to what they were like in the beginning when you just had this red, red reddish pink tusk sticking out of the ground. So I'm doing some more aspirin watering and that'll be it for this day on day 63. Uh, progress has been great so I look forward to a lot more growth and hopefully this will make this ready for more fertilization and just prevent any problems from happening. I don't know if aspirin actually does anything to poison bugs or deter them from eating the foliage as advocates have suggested. So this is day 69. I thought of the concept four days ago of using multivitamins that I eat to fertilize my plants. I was browsing in a Lowe's at various potting mixes. You know, I was reading the ingredient list. You know, there are different things such as uh, potting mixes for cacti and citrus plants and things like that. And I was reading through the ingredient list and realized that, you know, since animals can get pretty much everything from multivitamins, why not plants? And granted, there are people who would say, well, there are some things that are only fat soluble vitamins in vitamin pills but I'm not so much interested in the vitamins in these vitamin pills but rather all those trace minerals the metals the compounds and usable forms that will give plants things like calcium you know to help build cell walls and have a very robust exterior and things like manganese sulfate and whatnot and zinc um, magnesium oxide whatever you know, these are just usable compound forms for plants and animals that can be absorbed. So I don't really care about the fat soluble things because a, a plant's root system doesn't really interface with um, oil. I mean, plants don't eat oil or fats. They would get really screwed up if you apply that stuff to them, as some people find out when they, you know, put on too much neem oil or whatever. So. I'm only interested in using multivitamins for the purpose of getting the water soluble things in there in the soil for the roots to absorb and hopefully this will make a big difference. The concept is really solid on paper. You know I was browsing all these different fertilizers and potting mixes and I realized you know this is actually a much cheaper and probably more effective way to do it than to buy a different sort of potting mix for every single thing and yeah you could use you know like back guano or whatever or all these other things uh, various forms of compost but those sometimes have pathogens in them and they stink you know like chicken scat and whatnot so I'd rather not use that stuff I just thought of this idea while I was in a store and just wanted to try it out so hopefully this makes a big difference I had my first application you know four days ago as I said and this is just a live demo and I have no idea what concentrations I should be using so I'm going to make this one concentrated because I'm going to distribute it over all of my plants particularly my succulents 
Joshua tree seedling and century plant seedling have really struggled. So I think this might be the final key. Although I think the aspirin water may have helped those already. I saw, you know, somewhat of a difference, but none of this stuff is really statistically conclusive yet. So I'll just have to go with a low N number with many different trials and species and, you know, just see from experience what works. So this stuff doesn't look very appetizing, you know, but that's what happens in your stomach basically when you swallow one of these things. And I'm watering from the top because I want the vitamins to be concentrated towards the top and not just all sink towards the bottom. I haven't actually done any bottom watering for uh, any of my new plant series in 2016. And we've had a brutal heat wave lately. You know, it was like 109 Fahrenheit, 43 Celsius almost, when I went out on a hike in Julian, California recently. And then two weeks later, it was even hotter, so I just quit that hike. But um, I'm spraying some distilled water to wash off the vitamin residue. Now, people say fertilizer and, you know, high concentrations stuck on the foliage can cause burns. And I don't think that would happen at all with vitamin pill residue. It would probably form just, you know, a chalky residue or appearance on the outside, and that would be that. And it's just calcium carbonate and some minerals. Nothing that I think would really hurt. Uh, the calcium carbonate itself is what constitutes most of the pill and you know that could make the soil a little bit more basic if you add too much of it and over mineralization of soil is also a bad thing. You can have a state where you have plenty of water in sodden soil but the plant can't absorb it because the concentration of solutes is much greater in the soil than it is in the plants. So you would just have death at that point. So the foliage looks very, you know, erect and beautiful. Uh, there's lots of turgor pressure and the water droplets are very aesthetic up close. And the color is slowly getting greener and greener. So it's a pretty big transition to go from like red to yellow to green, but it's slowly happening. And I expect by the fourth episode, maybe the one after this one, that We'll have everything just be green except for the newest leaves. So it's a very attractive plant. It seems to be very hardy and robust, which is what I predicted intuitively. So you may find yourself asking, why am I doing all this if there are no signs of distress? Well, I just wanted to get a head start. So it's day 73. I started my bottom watering for all my plant series, and there's been a significant amount of growth. The foliage looks beautiful. It's not a lush green yet, but it's getting there. And the leaves, at least three of them, are getting quite big. As I said, a really brutal heat wave just passed, so that could contribute, uh, in addition to the hot weather on this very day of recording, to the leaf drooping. Hopefully the bottom watering will stimulate root growth which is a practice I used a lot in my first year, 2013, of plant growing series. There's a leaf on the stem that seems to be developing there and a strand of spider silk. So there are more and more leaves. Um, they look kind of droopy. I hope that they'll become you know, more erect overnight and this won't become a regular occurrence. But I had this problem with my loquat seedlings from 2015, the previous year. So I wouldn't be too surprised if the brutal afternoon California sun was doing this on a regular basis in the summer. A transpiration pull, loss of water through the leaves is just too great during the day, in the late afternoon especially. As of this last filming, it's been only 8 days since I first started applying vitamin water to my plants. It's only been 2 applications, so I'm really eager to see what the results will be like in say period of a month or beyond. I've already seen some very promising results in some of my other plant series, although nothing's gone wrong here. I figured why not give it a great start before things stall. So stay tuned for my next episode. Glad to have you back for another episode, episode 4 of this avocado germination and growing series. Everything looks very healthy. With regards to the question I posed in the third episode, this plant is a dicot. It's supposed to have two cotyledons, but there's only one little leaf 
which was formerly my favorite leaf, but nowadays it doesn't look that great. It's a very pale yellow green. It's on the bottom. It hasn't grown any bigger. I don't know what the deal with that is. The morphology looks a little bit different from the rest of the leaves. Maybe the other cotyledon got knocked off or ripped off or just didn't develop properly coming out of the soil. Um, seems very unlikely since I didn't cause any damage, but that was just a small point of curiosity. So there you go. Doesn't look too healthy. Stem is mostly yellowish with red dots. There are new leaves growing out, such as this one, and it's pale. They all start sort of reddish, then progress to yellow, then kind of a yellowish green. Although I'm not sure that this is what they're supposed to look like in the final stage. I think they should be broader, flatter, and a darker green. So this one is, I wouldn't say wrinkled, but they all kind of look like this. Um, they're getting bigger. Leaf tip might have some slight yellowing to it. I wouldn't call that a problem or a burn or anything like that. The soil is kind of a dark brown in the surrounding area. I refuse to believe at this point that it hasn't dried out from the sun at this point. So maybe it just got discolored from all the fertilization and vitamin watering that I did. So let's take a look at the watering tray. There's a little bit of moisture down there. Not too much. I might have to fill that up pretty soon. And one of the newer leaves looks like this. It's not bad. I mean it looks healthy, but it's sort of got that reddish yellowish tinge to it. And when they get bigger, all my leaves have looked like this. So I don't know if this is good or bad, but you know, it, it looks a little bit um, not smooth, you know, it just kind of pops out where the veins aren't. And so far, I haven't seen any signs that this is unhealthy, but you know, when you compare this to uh, other people's avocado plants, maybe it looks a little bit different. Maybe my conditions and fertilization are different. So in any case, I am going to add in some more vitamin watering. So it's time for some more fertilization. I'm going to apply some multivitamin. First I'll crush it with a pair of pliers. This pair is getting really rusty and it's not really that easy to operate so it always makes a big mess. I think I'll get a new pair in the future. Something that can aid the crushing of pills more easily such as the aspirin pills and the multivitamin pills I've been crushing for plant supplementation. I'm also going to use a full dose of miracle Grow Singles mm -hmm. conventional fertilizer containing the three plant macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Fill it halfway full and shake around, swirl around the water in my watering pail, then top it off and do that again. It's not going to dissolve completely so quickly, but over time, just by sitting in the watering tray, which I have full most of the time now, it'll dissolve. So you can see bug corpses in there, fungus gnats, which will further fertilize the solution and also get rid of fungus gnats, which is great. It's day 82, and the leaves are quite droopy like this. And if I'm not mistaken, the leaves that are further away from the sun pointed away and get that um, acute angle of sun you know, that just kind of glances off the leaves at a very sharp angle. Those leaves look healthier and bigger and greener while the leaves that are facing the sun don't look as good. Again, the soil seems to be stained a dark brown. That's not due to wetness because I'm not watering there anymore. Watering tray is still pretty full after two days and you can see that disgusting mass of at least three or four fungus gnats um, hooked onto some dirt and dust and just swirling around in there. So it's obvious that they're still proliferating but um, by watering in the bottom I've managed to drown a few of them. Uh, leaves look okay. Not super healthy, not unhealthy either. This one does look unhealthy. This thing that I've been calling or suspecting of being cotyledon. I don't know if it can come back from that. It's not a big loss if that leaf gets shed. And you can see another one developing and the one that was all sort of reddish before is now a lot more yellow. 
with a slight tinge of green in the middle. It's a lot longer too. Well, that's drooping too. So that suggests that the bottom watering, you know, at times it seemed to have worked, but during the midday, mid-afternoon western sun is just brutal. The transpiration pull is too great, so that means the root system just can't uptake enough water fast enough to keep the turgor pressure and all of these plant cells rigid. That's why the leaves are all drooping. So, you know, I'll think about this and see what I want to do. Um, I'd like to spin around the pot at some point and see if that alters the leaf growth and the ones that are closer to the sun. But for now, um, you know, I don't think the situation is that bad. So I'm just going to keep things as is. So I'm hoping the leaves just continue to get bigger, longer, wider, and greener as time goes on. It's only been a few days, and they are getting bigger and bigger, so I really don't have that much to complain about. And the stem is relatively short, I think. The only thing I can really do now to alleviate this is to spray water. I know it's not a long-term solution, but the water will keep the plant moist and reduce the transpiration. Everything should get perky again within a few minutes or maybe half an hour, an hour. And it just kind of looks cool to have that rain effect aesthetically on the plant. So it's day 84. I'm going to enact um, my little mini experiment and just spin this pot around so that the three leaves that are small and yellower as opposed to the three bigger leaves on the other side I'll spin those around so they're facing away from the sun and we'll see what happens over the next half week or whatever because I think there is something to uh, the possibility that maybe the sunlight is just too brutal from the western side in the mid-afternoon and I haven't looked it up yet but maybe avocado seedlings don't like full sun so if that's the case we should see an immediate difference these leaves should get greener and broader and longer less wrinkly and the three ones that are the biggest should you know start to yellow so three days later it's day 87 and as you can see it's not you know really that conclusive um, leaves ha look a little bit healthier for the ones that were smaller and I spun away from the Sun and there's been a little bit of development in the red leaf at the top so that's good seems like the plant is responding well to everything I do and so far everything is going pretty well so this leaf, um, you know, my leaves are just really veiny and sort of translucent. I thought they'd be thicker, but maybe that's just because this plant is still very immature. And, you know, you've still got the red dots and the yellowness on the stem. So the stem is short, and that's, in my mind, a good thing, because if it's too long and spindly, then it might just break from the wind. Some people's avocado plants are all stem very elongated tall stem with not that many leaves or leaf surface area mass that might mean it's not getting enough Sun or nutrients I don't know maybe it's just reaching and reaching for the Sun and never getting enough uh, in my case maybe it's getting too much Sun so as you can see that cotyledon looks a little better than it did last episode uh, although maybe it's just the angle so there are little bits of uh, black or brown matter on some of the leaves and there's a thread of web there which kind of worries me because it might be from spider mites there's another one or, or even two or three so that's pretty worrisome but I've checked all the bottoms undersides of these leaves and I don't see any spider mites so that's pretty reassuring I have very sharp eyes and with this macro footage zoomed in and magnified pretty significantly if I'm not seeing anything right now or any dumb spider mites crawling on the you know the stems then it's pretty much okay nothing on the petioles so that might just be isolated incidents of tiny little spiders actually 
All right, so in conclusion, I have seen just a little bit of evidence over the course of three days from having spun the pot around that maybe this thing is getting too much sun. So we'll wait until next episode and stay tuned to see if there are any further problems and how I'm going to solve them. Thanks for coming back for another episode of this Growing Avocado Trees from Seed series. This is the fifth episode, days 88 through 103. There's a new leaf at the top, as you can see. It's sort of a reddish brown, mostly red. And it looks very healthy. They're very perky like that when they first come out. And you can see two more leaves coming out. So as long as you're getting continuous leaf growth, you're doing good. Those red dots, like I said in the last episode, are not signs of disease, but rather that's just the way this thing looks. The established leaves could be a lot more green. They look sort of a sickly yellow. And upon closer inspection, actually, it looks like this leaf is, is burned. You know, I don't think it's the aspirin or the vitamins or anything, fertilizer splashing on the leaves. But the overall picture of health still looks pretty good. And as you can see from this view, you know, nothing really seems to be wrong other than those worrisome burns. So I'm going to go ahead and take a spray bottle filled with distilled water and spray that leaf off just to see if it's some kind of problem due to residue being on there. Although I think I've done this before, so I'm not sure that that's the problem. So it'll take some time to find out if this does anything, but... You know, in case it does, uh, I'll have another piece of data to work with. Otherwise, it's quite worrisome. So I can't detect any signs of stickiness or residue on there. You know, if there was something left on there, I'd be able to feel it. Especially after getting it wet, it should be sticky. Um, but even dry, you should be able to see anything. Uh, on leaves, it's usually very obvious. So I'm going to move this pot to next to the sliding door because I think it's getting a little bit too much sun as hard as that is to believe and I'm gonna water from the bottom this is just distilled water you know I'm done for a while um, fertilizing with vitamins and fertilizer it's just too much after a while but I noticed last time that I just had it in an hour for you know not even an hour maybe 30 20 minutes um, in the shade and the leaves all perked up. Maybe it's an issue of dehydration. Just can't get enough, um, you know, water in from the root system into the leaves. So, you know, a few minutes later, I changed my mind and I moved it to that corner. It's day 93. So three days after putting the pot in the corner, this is my balcony at night with the light on. That looks kind of cool, but otherwise in this kind of low artificial light situation the videography is just bad resolution doesn't look too hot I mean it's the same resolution but it's still uh, the quality really suffers so as you can see the leaves have perked up the new leaf over there looks great uh, the plant has greened a lot more some of these leaves have turned significantly darker green they're more verdant looking but as you can see, there's like three leaves and that little thing that I keep calling cotyledon that just look unhealthy. So on day 93, I decided, you know, after looking at this, maybe I should put it in full shade because it still gets too much afternoon direct sunlight. All right, it's day 94. It's one day, actually less than that, after I moved the pot into the shadow of this table. So it'll never get direct sunlight at this angle. It's too close to the edge of the table and the leaves all look much more green than they used to. Everything looks perky too so things are really starting to look up. However there are some leaves that are like this one's underdeveloped and it's just very yellow. Same with that cotyledon. That leaf is you know, very yellow green. Kind of looks like it has shades or shadows on it. I think there's been a fair bit of photo bleaching going on uh, with these avocado leaves being in full sun. I read that avocado seedlings typically grow up in the shade of their parent trees, information that could have served me very well if I had known beforehand I wouldn't have placed this pot high up on a table in full sun for several afternoon hours a day. 
tip of that cotyledon leaf is burned. It wasn't like that, you know, a few days ago. So I'm thinking some sort of program leaf death. Uh, the burns on these two leaves look pretty bad as well. It's progressing. So day 96, three days of full shade, plus 20k lux of reflective light off the sliding door of my balcony. If I stand in the way, you can see it's basically like indoor lighting levels, very low. So it's in complete shade, but since there's a sliding door there, it gets close to 20,000 lux. That's still defined as within the range of direct sunlight. It's 90k up here, you know, 900 times 100. So the burns on these original six leaves plus the cotyledon are seemingly worsening as time goes on with each passing day even though the light intensity is no longer anywhere near the 90,000 to 100 plus thousand that it was for several hours a day before the new leaves don't look as red as they used to maybe the photo bleaching uh, altered the coloration and just made it all very light because the chlorophyll uh, discs were getting fried by excessive electron activity generated by photons hitting you know for shade plants they have very large chlorophyll discs in the chloroplast and that is very very effective at capturing lower levels of light so the leaf on top has a more of a luster to it because it's new these older ones that have been photo bleached or essentially sunburned all look a lot less glossy and they look like they're dying so that cotyledon looks like it's finished and hopefully the plant can recycle the nutrients and suck them out before the leaves are shed I think this is one of those leaves that looked like it was going to be in bad shape but recovered and became the longest greenest leaf the rest don't look that hot anymore so as you can see 20,000 lux of reflective light is still pretty bright uh, some people would probably even need sunglasses for that it seems to be an amazing coincidence that I found the exact perfect level of light for this plant. On day 100, the photo bleach leaves are burning up on their own. They're on a auto-destruct or self-destruct program. It's almost like apoptosis in animal cells, but, you know, for an entire organ. Or, I don't know if you'd call a leaf an organ. Um, but yeah, this thing looks like it's literally getting burned by fire or a cigarette lighter and this leaf on top is gonna go as well it has all these yellow shadows so to speak on the leaf it's been photo bleached pretty badly this new leaf had a kink in it to begin with at the very end it's always like that but it's looking really healthy this might go uh, this one is toast for sure that's new leaf that's uh, still kinda yellow at the base just a little bit yellow but it's longest and one of the longest and greenest leaves not as green anymore as one of the new leaves this one was burned at the tip I've shown that in episodes past well I think mostly the last episode so that's gonna go and as you can see my plant is looking more and more robust it really sucks to have to replace all those new leaves but you know the stem itself is green it's very rigid and it doesn't seem to be responding to phototropism as much anymore. So yeah, I basically spun around the pot so that it's sort of bent towards the underside of the table and hopefully it'll just straighten out. And I hope I don't have to keep doing that. That's kind of bothersome. But for even leaf development's sake, I'll have to spin this pot around and have it at different angles every few days, I think. Just because this uh, reflective sunlight deal only comes from one direction so it's questionable you know maybe whether I should have less light or more light but that's not really something I can control at this point um, these are still sort of artificial conditions and I'm watering with more distilled water from the bottom although I probably don't need to you know uh, vitamin soaked patch at the top just looks like it's wet all the time even though it's been dry just like everything else and I think I got this thing down. You know, it's day 103. So it's been a while. Like, what has it been? 10 days of reflective sunlight. 20K. 
and I nearly have a new set of six nice green verdant leaves to replace the six that I lost or even more so I imagine that these leaves will just get bigger than ever and they'll exceed the perimeter of the pot like they're doing now I mean that one leaf that's close to us that's basically beyond the edge and the stem is short the leaves are just coming out like crazy I'd say on average it's been one new leaf primordia every day but it's rapidly approaching the rate of almost one every day or at least it seems like it all these leaves were replaced at maybe the rate of one every two days it's pretty amazing considering how big they are that thing's fried to a crisp sort of looks like a giant leaf mantis or you know some other kind of uh, spiny leaf insect something like that you know because of the curl looks like the abdomen of a giant insect and likewise for that one it's curling uh, both leaves are dying so they're not really interfering with each other but this is quite the amazing sight I've never seen anything like this but it just goes to show how important the light levels are for plant growth and every plant has its own conditions you might see pictures of avocado trees growing in full sun in fields and orchards but yeah, the reality is if you're trying to rear young saplings or seedlings you might need different conditions and if I hadn't gone on the internet and done a search I wouldn't have known that this actually grows in shade when it's young but then again you know I wouldn't have looked on the internet if I didn't have any problems so sometimes you don't do research until a new problem comes out so that's a cotyledon it's shed Thanks for watching my fifth episode and stay tuned for a sixth. Hey, welcome back. It's Melvin. It's day 104. Are we on our way to a full recovery? Let's find out. So the leaves look very verdant and dark green. The newer ones are lighter and we have all these old leaves that are dying. They've been sunburned so I expect them to fall off eventually and just shrivel away over time. Although. I might interfere and just prune them away to see if that stimulates any new growth. It probably won't because there's not much left to cut away. I think pruning really works on healthy leaves. We have some lesions on some of these existing older leaves and some spots on the new ones. Maybe it's getting too much sun. It's day 108. It's another beautiful day in my neighborhood. Love the coloration of these apartment buildings. And let's check on the status again. So this is in the morning. Uh, the sun hasn't hit the balcony yet. Joshua tree is doing pretty good. And if you look at this, it's actually healthier. It's uh, very verdant looking. At least the older leaves are. One of them has a curl on the end. It just came out that way. So new leaves are constantly growing and that's a great sign. Uh, the old leaves as I mentioned earlier are just gonna wither away and although these leaves get very little direct sunlight per day I think they've been burned and scorched by the heat too so they're basically goners they are just uh, going through a self-destruct program essentially and I assume the plant is recycling all this nutrients so aside from that and being unsightly for a while these are okay so it's day 111 and I'm seeing how much direct sunlight my avocado seedling gets I'm just uh, doing this and being lazy just looking through my sliding door so yeah it gets some sun you know now it's 3 p.m. it's still in direct sun although it's not much I mean not all the leaves are directly exposed so it's impossible to get a spot on the balcony where it won't get any direct sunlight at all and there was a while I think where I tried to have this half under the table that didn't really work and what I mean by that is the plant just wasn't getting enough sun hence the leaves were a very verdant dark green and there was just very little growth in my estimation so what I'm doing now is it's day 112 I'm dissolving 
some low dose aspirin pills that are crushed with these pliers in distilled water, a liter per jug. These are 1.5 liter jugs. I normally use them for hiking. I'm going to wash them out later and fill them with more water. So the purpose here is I'm leaving for vacation and I'm going to be gone for like 10 days uh, starting the day after this, day 113, and I want to get a good hydration of the soil. I think one a viewer of my series mentioned that it could be the leaf drooping could be due to or the curling of the leaves certain leaves could be due to an over salting of the soil so I'm going to try to combat that by flushing out the soil with lots and lots of distilled water the aspirin does add a little bit of salt there but it's a very tiny amount compared to what's probably in this pot and what's causing all this leaf curling so that comes from just too much macronutrient fertilizer, the miracle Grow, and several crushed vitamin pills worth of calcium carbonate, etc. So that just mineralizes the soil. Not necessarily salts it, but it just adds to the amount of solutes in there. So in extreme cases, if there's way too much salt in soil or potting mix, then the plant is literally dying of thirst, even though it's feet are soaking wet so to speak because it can't absorb water against a high salt gradient where the soil is saltier than the solutes inside the plant itself so inside plant and animal cells you have lots of salts and solutes as well but in extreme cases especially for plants that don't grow in salt marshes or mangroves etc you know or in very salty environments such as next to salt flats then you know the plants will have all their you know water sucked out of the roots by the salt and die so they literally can't drink from wet soil so i'm going to wash off all these leaves very thoroughly there should be some aspirin residue but i think that's minor and you know on this day you can really see the leaf curl just because of the weight the water adds but you know, even if the leaves were dry, it's still a little droopier than I'd like. So this is going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of flushing. And of course, I can't just splash the whole thing violently on the surface of the soil. When it's uh, all loose like that, the potting mix, it'll just splash around. And that's really annoying to see everything shift. And then you've got this giant crater in certain spots. But luckily, I have all these dead leaves on the soil. All six of them, or seven of them. And they're good because they prevent evaporation, provide cover, and acidify the soil as they rot. So I can water on them by pouring my watering can directly onto the dead leaves, and that won't cause any soil shifting. So now we have all these nutrients flushing out. So I think that's only been one liter's worth of distilled water with aspirin in it. It's a very uh, non-salty solution, essentially. So then I'll wash out all the miracle grow and excess calcium carbonate, or most of it. It would take a truly staggering amount of distilled water to wash everything out, but that's not actually my goal. I do want a lot of those macronutrients and micronutrients to stay in there so the plant can grow at a healthy pace. So the water coming out looks pretty clean. Um, before, I've shown footage in previous episodes where there were dead bugs floating around in there and particles of potting mix, dirt. It's pretty gross. So this is good cleaning. It may have gotten rid of a lot of those fungus gnat corpses. So this is how I'm going to orient the pot prior to my departure for vacation. So we're going to have one last look at my baby before I go away. Um, hydration is definitely not going to be an issue. It might take two weeks or even three for the plant to use up that much water assuming things go right these are pretty big leaves so should be a decent amount of transpiration pull compared to say the Joshua tree so I'm looking forward to coming back to giant leaves that are erect and not droopy granted these are wet right now so it's day 125 it's after the vacation I do have huge leaves that aren't drooping um, you probably can't get a proper sense of the scale, so I will measure these. They're not dark green, and I mean there is a tiny bit of droop, but 
you know if the leaves were already droopy and curly I don't think that's gonna go away um, even after you rectify the situation 100% so this leaf has some brown spots on it I have no idea what those are but look how big this is it's my new favorite leaf it's longer than my hand and so are some of the other leaves as well uh, these aren't as dark green as that one uh, the one that is more dark green paradoxically has more exposure to the afternoon sun I think the sun has shifted uh, from the course of July through August so let's measure this and see how big it is it's by my estimation 67 millimeters wide and the ruler doesn't even extend that long so it's 15 centimeters I'd say 17 centimeters that's pretty big so you can tell how hydrated the soil is by lifting the pot it's still heavy which means there's a lot of water in there hence the dark coloration of the soil even on the surface I thought I had this plant at the perfect angle to get all that reflective light in the afternoon but it's now August instead of July and the Sun has shifted its trajectory relative to my balcony so only the leaves on the right are getting this reflective afternoon light and they look healthier uh, well I don't know I guess there are three leaves that look great and two that are you know gray looking but less uh, green and one that's got all the spots like a leopard so here's a good demo so the trajectory of the Sun has shifted the reflective light um, is coming more to the right of the balcony so I'm shifting this pot out and it's further out further to the right and hopefully that'll get a lot more Sun I might even just move it very close to the sliding door that's where I used to have some of my plants and that might be an optimal spot there was a while there where I was worried that the shoot ape called Maristem died but it looks like it's healthy and growing again so I look forward to getting a lot more new leaves